This is a D5000 LCR meter. It's capable of two wire measurements using banana jacks or four wire measurements using these two slotted connectors. So in order to access these slotted connectors, they sell a, well this adapter here, their TL21 model. I've taken it apart. It gets access to these by this device here. Where we're plugging in a double sided board in each one of these. Now, the guard doesn't matter, it's only one connection. But once we plug this or something like it in here and separate the spring clips down there, these don't do anything, they're dummies. We now have turned it into a four wire measuring system. And if you take a look at it, the four wires are minus one, two, and plus two and plus one and two. So we have minus one and two, plus one and two. Now we can't really measure what's happening here because the red and white wires are connected together and the four wire measurement ends right here. And see where the red and white come together. It seems to be a common thing to do when you buy this in one of these uh, to stretch these leads as far as possible. And there's a lot of ways people have done it. Invariably they're all the same though. But before I get into stretching these leads, let's identify what the red and white wires do, plus and minus. To do that I'm going to cut these clips off. Now there are two pair of two wires shielded. You can tell they're shielded because each one has a shield coming out of it. Two conductor, two pairs. Each pair is individually shielded. So now they're not connected together. I made a little sketch of this box and I'll put this ohm meter on sound. I'm going to go to the far side, which I believe will be a plus. The far side is plus two. I'm going to go to the inside, and that must be plus one. So, oh, but this is uh, minus two. I'll go to the far side of this. Minus two. I'll go to the near side of this. plus, it's minus one, minus one. And just for the hell, we're going to mark the colors down. Uh, 
So using this sketch, I came up with this drawing where this is the little box drawn to scale. So there it sits. And I intend to mount a connector on it. And this is a connector I intend to use. And here is the front of the box. Again to scale. And here's the connector. Now in addition to this connector being mounted on the front on the face of the box, I intend to mount a grounding ring around the connector before I tighten the nut up. So in order to mount this ring terminal, I need to modify it. So what I need to do is cut it off about here. Get rid of this crimp part altogether. And then, with it rotated a little bit, slice off a little bit of here and here. Again, this is to scale. So I've taken this box drawing and scaled up to twice as big. I've scaled this up to twice as big. And this gives us a better view of what has to be done. So first of all, I remove some things in the box that are going to interfere dimensionally. Now these little triangular interference points are to allow for the nut to rotate. So this one needs, at least according to the drawing, to be a little hollowed out spot in the box here. Because this is the worst case if the nut were to be tight up here. If the nut passes around to where this is no longer pointed directly upward, I won't need to modify the lid. The exterior of the box, and I don't make note of this in the drawing, um, there's two little bosses here where the wire exits. I'm going to have to take them off so that this front, the face of this, is perfectly smooth. As it is right now, there's a little bit of a bump there. And a corresponding bump down here. Take the wires out, of course. Well, the circuit board removed. We'll have to drill a 12 millimeter hole right in the face of this box. And then these interference points in here. There were four circuit board mounts. It just gravities down on top of these things. I've already taken two of them out. So they need to be cleaned up a little bit. That's shown here on the drawing. There's a partial rib. Let's see if I can get in the light here. Extending across the top of the box right there. Not at the top, but up here. That needs to be smoothed out a little bit. I probably could get away without even modifying it. Then, I need to make a little divot 
down here in the base of the box and a matching little divot up here. Maybe. Depending on the orientation of this nut when it's tight. So the modified uh, grounding terminal, this ring with a little tab on it, is outlined right here. And you can see I could have probably left this on, but I needed to flatten out that dashed line right there. I needed to remove these in order to fit them in the box. Now I'm going to have to remove some of the circuit board in here. I don't really show that, but up here, around here, back down, because this thing's going to sit about there, and that is that will interfere with the circuit board. This drawing's already in the subdirectory listed below. But it may be updated or corrected whenever I find out where I screwed up. So take note that the date on this is 727. And make sure you check for an updated drawing. Here's a little box with the modifications. You can see the grounding terminal. The ring terminal that I'm going to use to ground this. And I've eaten away. It's not symmetrical because I wanted to save this ground. Although I'm not sure why. Uh, I had to cut out a little bit on each end here to clear for the wrench to tighten the nut. And of course the lid. So there's the lid. The lid's just a little bit high because of this. I'll have to take a file and attack both. I thought I had removed enough metal, but the lid is a little bit being held up a little bit, I think. So I'll put the wires on from here to here and finish this up. This is the inside of the completed box. Although it turns out I probably didn't even need to cut back so far. It looks as if all of these are above printed circuit board. And indeed According to my two-scale drawing, these pins are above that circuit board. I did put a little piece of shrink wrap on every one of the pins. And I used uh, high temperature insulation on the wires. There's my ground lug. And the box still has a little gap in it because I didn't take care of clearing this edge of the nut. I used this nibbling tool to attack the circuit board. It has a, a square die on it cut in an angle and it takes out about that much depth wise at each chomp. And the width of each completed chomp is that big. So 
So chomp chomp. I think you can buy these Chinese for less than 20 bucks. And now I'll go ahead and prepare one of these to mate with this connector. So I'll do that in the next video.